Okay, so I hope the microphone's working. Um, partly making this for myself, but I'm going to stick it up on the YouTube channel anyway. So if you find it useful, uh, then I suppose that's good. I'm not a professional tutorialist. So here goes. Um, if you wanted to create an OpenEXR file, so you've got your multiple passes coming out of 3ds Max, which we have open down here, right? And I have this scene. It's part of a Crash Bandicoot scene, actually, that I... Yeah, it's part of this ongoing project, and it's it's been partly successful. I'm gonna hide both our crash models and hide our cortex model for now. Grab this Aku Aku crate, which is kind of a redesign on the original Aku Aku crate using a vector design from something I found on DeviantArt. Um, and this is for academic purposes, so I'm not making money out of this. It's just a project. It's part of my university course. So, build the Aku Aku crate. If I wanted to render this out, because if we take a look at the Aku Aku crate, um, we jump in here. We see, if you're familiar with 3ds Max, you've got the material slate, slate material editor, you've got the diffuse channel here, you've got the self-illumination channel, and you've got the bump map. In my case, I've also got the diffuse hooked into the specular color and the bump map hooked into the specular level. So if this kind of thing makes sense to you, then it makes sense to you. Presumably, if you're watching this video, it does. So this is what approximates my Aku Aku crate. Jump in here, got the Aku Aku crate. Give it some shadows when I render it out, and you'll see in a second. So, um, like that, I reckon. And we don't really want it to be pink, do we? We'll, we'll take uh, we'll take white. White goes okay. Um, jump in here, make sure it's yeah, say about five hundred by five hundred, um, and make sure it's more or less sitting. Using the alignment tool, we're going to grab it so it's got the same X and Y position, but not the same set position, because here we have a pivot point which is right in the middle of the crate. So these are the kind of crates that Crash is going to be jumping on and breaking. Um, so let's grab that, so that's an OK angle, right? Um, bring it out a little bit, because hopefully the shadow should begin to fall over on this side. So when we jump in to our render setup, here's how we would create an open EXR file. Here's how we would render one out as an open EXR file with the diffuse channel separate and the specular channel separate and the self-illumination channel separate separate and so on and so forth. We would jump inside our scanline renderer. It probably works with other renderers, but I'm fairly new to this. As I say, largely making this to remind myself in a kind of uh, amnesia-like way later on. So we've got the common. We're in the scanline renderer. I don't know if this works. It most likely does work almost certainly does work with other renderers, but we're going to use the scanline renderer. I'm going to jump into render elements, because we've got these tabs here, common and renderer. Render elements. And I've already added them, but effectively the way you would do this is you would hit the add button, and you'd have a list. You know, we could add diffuse, and now we have two diffuse channels, which is not, um, which is not particularly useful. Um, so here we've got specular, self-illumination, diffuse, shadow, and lighting. Not too sure about these two, but you get the idea. You can add them. Now, when we're rendering out, whether or not we want it to render out these channels is dependent on whether or not we click this box. So elements that are active would be rendered out. So if you wanted to just forget about rendering out separate passes, you just turn this box on and off, right? So that's good. So we're going to turn it on because that's what we want to do. And the second thing we have to do to render out as EXR is we have to come down to render output in the common tab of our render options or render setup. Um, and we have to hit files and it's going to open up. And so right now I have JPEG selected and the file name, I suppose the, the prefix that I'm adding to all these files as I'm, re as I, as I'm rendering them out is multipass test. So we'll keep that and we'll jump down to opening XR if I can find it. There we go. And we're going to save. And right now I've got it outputting to the desktop as you can notice from that uh, window. And it's basically saying, we're going to add all these different passes when we render out. We're going to add your specular, your self-illumination, diffuse, shadow, and lighting. Um, I don't know about G-Buffer, as I say, not an expert. Um, but these are the ones I've selected to render out. So we hit OK. So now it knows what it's going to do when I hit the render button up here. Uh, and so when I hit the render button up here, this should happen. We have the picture of the crate. It's kind of like our standard picture. And then it's cycling through. You see that? It's cycling through all of the other... Um, passes of the render. So this is just our standard diffuse. This one is our shadow. This one is our lighting. 
Uh, this one is our self-illumination. You see the only part of the crate that's actually illuminated is the Aku Aku face. Um, and then you've got specular, and the reason this is colored is, of course, because I've hooked the base diffuse color of this model, of this crate, into the specular color. So it shines, but it shines with a particular color. So that's why that's in color rather than just whitey, shiny kind of stuff. So we jump out here, and what we should find, and we have found it, is our multi-pass test, which is an OpenEXR file, .exr. Um, these are chunky files, like I found that, you know, an OpenEXR file, if you were to render out the equivalent number of passes, so to say I stuck them in this folder and I just rendered uh, out as JPEG, so because the cool thing about the OpenEXR, obviously, is, is putting it all in one file, right? It's kind of, it's a bit like a, a layer comp in After Effects. It's, containing all those different things. If I was to render out as JPEG instead of EXR, and I'd gone over back to our um, options and it's, as, it, as I had it before, and instead of when selecting files, selecting open EXR, I selected JPEG, what it would have done, what is it? it would have done the same thing, it would have rendered out my passes, but it would have put them here as separate files, right? Added together those files, um, still not have been anywhere near as large as this so it open XR file. So it's like a lossless format. It's a chunky format, but if you want to uh, uh, contain as much and preserve as much of that quality as possible, you're going to want something like that, so that's good. Um, from here, I would put it into After Effects. Uh, and the second thing I found, which I found from another tutorial on YouTube, is if you've worked with the XR and After Effects before, you get this, uh, this effect called Extractor, EX, Tractor. EXR, um, and it's good, and it's, I guess, what you use to open and change the values of these different uh, lighting and color and other passes, but it's a little awkward because you've kind of got to go through it one by one. If you've done this, you know what I mean. I found this called ProXR. Um, it's just through this website. It looks like just like a freeware plugin. Um, it, I haven't installed it yet, but it doesn't seem to have any cost attached to it. I mean, usually when you have a website that looks like this, your shit's free. That just tends to be the way it goes. Um, so I hope you find this tutorial. I hope I kind of, in a way, vicariously in the future, find this tutorial um, useful. And thank you very much for watching.